Hello and welcome to another Olfi 1.5 tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at how to set the Olfi 1.5 up for time lapse. What we got to do is go and find the time lapse mode. So we need to uh, use the top button to cycle through until we get into our main menu. We're not going to be doing a video time lapse, we want to go straight for photo time lapse. We're doing this the manual way. So we go to time lapse mode, which is this icon. And we're in. Okay, so we need to set up a time lapse in given intervals. So we can enter the sub menu using the bottom of the two side buttons, this one just here. Let's press that to go in. Okay, so you may have to excuse our menu system a little bit. It might look a little bit different on yours in terms of color. The things that are in there should be the same. This is a early prototype version of uh, Alfie 1.5, so things may, may be a little bit different on yours. Uh, but the basic features will work the same. So the first one is we have time lapse interval. We're going to go ahead and press that, and we're going to choose between 3, 5, 10, 30, and 60 seconds, one minute. So we need to decide, uh, given our subject, what we want to do. I like going for the three second one. This will use more battery. Um, the kind of less often you ask the camera to take a photo, the more battery life you're going to get out of it. But really, I want to use a three second. The, the, the video you're going to see at the end of this is clouds over a mountain. Uh, three seconds for me usually works quite well for this. And we were going to do the time lapse over the course of about half an hour, 40 minutes. So I'm going to choose three seconds. And we select that by pressing the shutter button. Image size, we're going to go for the maximum. Quality, we go for normal. Fine adds a little bit of uh, extra sharpness in, but we're just going to keep it as normal. Sharpness, sharpness, again, we just want to keep that on medium probably. And uh, again, this is my personal preference uh, to try and get the best image quality out of the camera for what I like. Feel free to play with these settings. Uh, white balance, uh, I'm going to leave that on auto as well. We're going to talk about white balance, color, and things like that in more detail. Another point. We're going to go for the standard color profile. If you really want to ramp those colors up afterwards, it might work going for the flat mode. And um, for some, but for most people, standard um, would be great. Right, so you can choose auto. Um, I like going for 100 because then I know that we're we're not going to be in a situation where we're going to see any digital grain, digital noise on the image. Exposure. Uh, you can see it's set a little low. Um, one stop low here on mine. The reason for that, uh, the video you're going to see that we've just come back from shooting is it's quite a bright day, um, as you can probably tell from my background. Um, to be honest, uh, I found I just you kind of just play with this one uh, using the preview screen. Um, I found it a little bit overexposed in the normal instance, so I just dropped that exposure down a little bit just to just to help us out there. Um, but you can choose whatever you want. What so. Say for like a, a really bright day here. Yeah. Focus, there we go. Um, let's go for the minus one. Uh, okay, so next thing we got metering. Again, this is something we'll talk about in some more detail uh, in the future. Um, choose what you feel would be best for your subject. If you're doing something with clouds, I wouldn't go down to spot because every time a cloud passes the center of the image, the camera will adjust exposure and that will end up looking a little bit strange on the time lapse. So average or center should be fine. Uh, we're not worried about the gyro because really you're going to want to put the, the camera in a steady position. Uh, you'll see in a minute we'll, we'll show like a setup video um, of, of setting the camera up on the tripod and things like that. Uh, you're going to want to keep it as still as possible. Field of view. I actually set this to medium uh, for the video you're about to see. Um, Wide had so much more detail in. Um, you could you could see a lot more, but I could really wanted to focus on the on the mountain and sky uh, rather than some of the foreground elements. So I, I, I chose the medium field of view for this. Distortion correction. We're going to leave that alone. And timestamp. Um, you, you're probably not going to want the timestamp on your on your video. So to get back out of this, go for the mode button again. We're back and we're ready to go. Now we're out in the field, we've got our camera set up and we're ready to go. So you're going to need a good sturdy tripod or something where the camera is mounted solidly and isn't moving. You can see by these clips here that it's pretty windy. 
so I wouldn't recommend using something that's going to wobble around in the wind a bit. For this, we actually shot with the Olfi in its frame housing. That's included with the Olfi 1.5. You see, yeah, just clipping it in there. Now it's got tripod threads on the top and the bottom, so it can be mounted upside down if that's needed to be. Okay, so we're just screwing it into the tripod plate, keeping it nice and secure. And then literally, that is it, we're good to go. Hit record, and your time lapse will start. Okay, so now we're on the computer, we're gonna show you how to import and edit your time lapse sequence. Uh, we're gonna use HitFilm Express. Uh, now, HitFilm is a free application for both Windows and Mac, so this should be pretty easy to follow along with. Uh, the link to download it will be in the description. So first of all, you wanna import your files onto your computer. Uh, we're gonna do that now uh, with my Olfi. So on the back of the Olfi, when you plug it into your computer, you'll need to choose the mass storage option. And we'll go through importing files in general in, in another video. So I've got it here. Uh, we'll bring that up. You can see the movies and the photos. We'll go into photos. This big, big list of photos is my time lapse sequence. Now I've already copied this over to um, to the file that I need to use uh, to my folder structure dedicated to my tutorials on my hard drive. Uh, I would suggest doing the same, uh, always using something like an external hard drive or something like this, because your your files are going to be huge in the end. I think there's nearly a thousand photos in this time-lapse sequence. So, what we want to do is, uh, after we've imported our files, is jump into HitFilm. Now, I've just exported one uh, to show you. So, you're going to want to jump into HitFilm. Uh, I'm actually using the Pro version because we've got a license, but don't... Um, don't worry, this tutorial would be very, very similar and easy to follow on Express. You want to create a new sequence. Um, obviously, that was just asking me if I wanted to close my old one. So we're going to create a, a new project. Um, I'm just using the preset for 1080p Full HD PAL. You can choose if you're in America, you want to use NTSC, you can use that. I'm not going to change or play with any of the other settings, and we're just going to go straight to start editing. Okay, once the editor appears, it's really easy. Over on the left-hand side, we've got our import window. Click the little drop-down arrow. It's important not to click import. You want to click the drop-down arrow because it imports special media. And we're going to tell it we want to import an image sequence. Click image sequence. This will open um, your import uh, and your folder structure. I'm going to choose my hard drive where it's stored. I'm going to go for my Olfi folder. I'm going to go and find where I saved all my images to. It's important to save them in an individual folder for this because HitFilm looks at a folder full of photos. So if at the end of your time lapse sequence you came in and you turn the camera off from the front and it can see you, you might just want to go through those photos first in the folder and delete them because it makes it a little bit easier when you come to edit. Choose the folder. Don't double click to open the folder. Um, and we're just going to press open. Now this will know that it's a time-lapse sequence, so it's appeared here for me. Down on the side we've got that it's 39 second video uh, at 25 frames a second. Now there is a little settings window if you want to change if you want to change this uh, and change the frame rate that it imports it at. So you can choose um, a few different options. Um, in there, I'm just gonna stick with the 25. I'm pretty sure it will default to whatever your timeline is. And we're gonna press okay. So you're gonna to wanna to drag your uh, image sequence over here into the timeline. When you drag it in, it's gonna ask if you want it to change your editor to match the sequence. You need to press no. Otherwise, it will make the video the same size as the photos and the file will be massive. And you wanna make sure that you put this at the front of the timeline. I didn't then, I just dragged it in willy nilly. You're gonna make, make sure that that's at the front um, of the timeline so that it plays back straight away. Now you'll see a preview of what your video looks like on the right hand side here. Right now this is really, really, really zoomed in because 
1080p is much, much smaller than our image size. But there's an easy fix for this. Just go over to the Controls tab here. You want to go to Transform, and you'll see the scale. So what we want to do is 100% scale now. We're going to want to make that smaller. Just drag it down until we can see pretty much the whole image in. If you drag it too far, you'll notice because the image is square, you're then going to get some banding at the sides and, and you know, black lines at the side. We don't want that. We're just good. So you are going to have to crop in the image ever so slightly. That looks about right. That's filled the, the full window here for me. So now you can use the arrows to change the position slightly. So we're pretty much full, fully wide. I'm going to pull it down a little bit. I'm going to get rid of some of this foreground. If I go too far, we're going to get a black line at the top. So it allows you to recompose your shot a little bit and, and you can choose how you want this. Right now, I think that's looking pretty good. That is it. Now you can try and play it back. There's a few other tweaks you can do. You can go in and edit the color and things like that. We're not going to look at that now. This is purely just making a time-lapse sequence straight away. If you push play, uh, your computer will most likely struggle trying to play it back. It'll look a little bit jumpy. Don't worry about that. You're giving HitFilm a lot of information. Do remember, you know, this is a free or very cheap application if you are paying for it compared to some of the you know, really high-end editing packages, Photoshop, um, and things like After Effects will also allow you to make um, time lapses, uh, but those applications do cost a considerable amount of money. So this is a really, really great way of doing it for free. What I would suggest, rather than playing it back in here, your computer might struggle. If you go straight up to export, uh, choose the appropriate option. You can upload straight to YouTube. I tend to go for the MP4 option, uh, this tab here. You want it to be, the timeline is the editor that you're in. The content area is where it's going to export. You can see that the length is the same length that we had earlier. We want it to export video and audio. There isn't any audio, but you could, if you know a little bit more, you want to try a little bit more, you can import some audio and add that to your tracks and music. Leave everything else the same and hit export. It will ask you for a location, and once everything's exported, uh, you can go ahead, open that up, and do whatever you like with it. This was shot over about half an hour, a little bit longer, at three seconds intervals. So you can see the sheep moving, the clouds are moving nicely over the sky. And that's all there is to it, really. So check back soon for another Olfi tutorial.